Okay, so um, we're now moving on to what I uh, normally uh, sort of consider to be one of my least favourite jobs when I'm doing these kind of conversions for locos, and that's the rear lighting using fibre optic, or any lighting using fibre optic. Um, it's it's very small, it can be very hard to use, it is actually quite brittle if you if you bend it too much. Um, to get a lovely dome effect on it, you introduce a little hot flame to it, um, but then that can very quickly melt and run back the fibre optic. So it can be a wee bit tricky to play with, but it's definitely worth the, the end result. Now what we need to work first work out is just how much depth we're going to need on fibre optic to get through the body. So I reckon on this one we're looking at about one millimetre, so it needs to be a millimetre. And then on the end of the millimetre we need uh, a, an, enough to allow for a slight doming when we introduce the flame. Um, that can all be pretty tricky to, to do and I've learned from mistakes where I've cut it to size and then tried to melt it and it, it just, for so many reasons, it's not a good way to do it. So what I normally do is I'll cut off a small length of fibre optic um, from this so that I can, I can take it over to the cooker is what I use actually to dome the end of it but you could use a, uh, a cigarette lighter or something like that as well. But I'll cut off a small length of fibre optic, I take it over to the cooker and I just very quickly dab it into the flame and you'll notice it very very quickly, I mean milliseconds almost, the end of it will just dome slightly. Once I've done that I bring it back to the workbench and then I'll cut it to the right length behind um, so that uh, that way all the burning, all the stuff that might shrink down the fibre optic has been done first and then we cut it to length. So that's what I'm going to go and do anyway. I'll cut this into a couple of little sections. I'll take it over to the cooker, uh, I'll dome the ends and then I'll bring it back here and then we can look at cutting them all to length. Right, so I took this over and I started doming the ends uh, and then I remembered I actually have a different way that I can do it as well. Um, doming really, it, it's a bit of an art um, and you often don't even need to introduce this into the flame for it to start melting very quickly. So I've done one here and it worked okay but um, I think what I'll do for the other ones is the, the other approach um, which, I, which I use which is to take um, a little sanding pad like this um, with a very fine grit on it, very very fine grit uh, and then just polish the end in a kind of circular mo motion like that um, and I just do this quite quite a few times just until you can see a wee kind of dome appearing there and actually this can have the, the same kind of effect as uh, as using a, a flame, a naked flame to do it, but it's much more controllable. So I have used the naked flame to do one, but I'll do the, the other four that I need just using this, uh, this approach, and uh, then I can work out which is more reliable for future use. Okay, so just one little tip when you're cutting anything which is sort of circular, whether it's um, you know, a plastic or pipe or a brass rod or something like that. If you if you just cut it straight down or use scissors or, or something like that, then it has a tendency to squash them. But uh, just a, a tip that I picked up a while ago was just to roll it backs and forwards with a sharp blade. Now, I can't actually do it very easily with this one at the moment because there's a, a whole load of, uh, of it bundled together. But if it can run freely, roll along like that, as you're rolling the blade backs and forwards over it, just applying a light pressure, then it will cut down through it uh, and then it will leave it a still a perfect round shape. Alright, so I have cut up, you probably can't see them, um, but I have cut up a number of uh, tiny little lenses now out of the fibre optic. Uh, I've got four of them, but I'll just use one for the purposes of, of this particular demonstration. Um, I have some blue tack, which is what I use for loads of things in modelling. It's really, really useful just to hold things where you want it. I have got one of the red um, surface mount LEDs, pre-wired, mounted in the blue tack, and um, up, upwards, so its lens is facing upwards. And now the tricky bit here is uh, is affixing the fibre optic to the lens. It really is pretty tricky stuff, this bit. Uh, you don't want to sneeze, you don't want a, a draft to suddenly blow through the house or anything when you're doing this. Now, what I am going to do is uh, pop a tiny little bit of uh, super glue onto the, the lens of the LED. Um, just a very small amount, you want it to be setting really quickly and you don't really want to get any onto the onto the blue tack, so just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. In this particular instance, less is definitely more. Excellent. And uh, what we now want to do is get the uh, get the, the lighting lens and we we'll want it the right way around, so let's just work out which side I've polished. Right there, okay. Excellent, and now we want to take this 
and place it on top of the uh, on top of the LED. Sorry, my uh, chat is slowed down now while I do this. Almost had it. Try that again. As you can see here, it is incredibly finicky. But once it's done, it's done. There we go, excellent. Bang on second time. Right, so we'll leave that to dry. Uh, once it's dried, I will put on uh, some more coats of uh, of paint, just uh, not paint, sorry, of super glue just around the bottom just to hold it on. And uh, once that's fully dried, then we'll, we'll paint the outside of it and then we'll get it installed in the loco. Uh, and I've got another three of these to do, so I'll pop away and do that. And when they're all ready, we'll come back to the installation process. So I don't know how well this is going to show up because it's really, really tiny, but just before I go on to, to painting these uh, these little rear lights um, black, I just wanted to show you that right at the end there, the fibre optic, I've used a, a Sharpie marker, just a permanent red marker, just to colour the end of the, um, the, the, the end of the fibre optic red. Now I tend to do this loads, sometimes you'll get a red LED which is actually red, um, but more often than not, um, the, uh, the surface mount LEDs that are pre-wired come as clear and they're only red when you apply electricity to them. So what I normally do is just so that the lenses appear red when the lights are not on, I'll just use a permanent Sharpie marker Marker, just to go over the, the end of that. What you can then do if you want is put a wee dab of, uh, of varnish onto that as well, um, a, a gloss varnish, um, just to protect the red so it doesn't wipe off. But uh, I generally find that the Sharpie markers are pretty robust anyway. Okay, so the last step then before assembling the lights into the body is just to, to paint the, the outside of the LEDs and the lower section of the fibre optic with some black acrylic paint. Um, I've just used a, a very small um, sort of detail brush just to do that, and again, just some uh, some black uh, Humber acrylic, but any any type of acrylic will do. And just carefully around the LED, uh, around the base of the fiber optic, just to make sure that any potential for light spillage that might come through the plastic and, and create a kind of halo effect around the light that that's uh, is reduced as much as possible. Okay, so that's us finished preparing all of the lights. We have the, uh, the the four, the directional lights, the old head code box lights, and we've got the wee reverse lights that we've made up as well. They're all painted and they're dried and they're good to go. Um, now, this is the, the tricky part, is now installing them into the, the front of the locomotive. Um, it takes a steady hand, uh, a lot of patience, and, uh, and just time to get it exactly right. I normally use a tiny wee dab of super glue when I'm doing this just to make sure that they, they stick fast and then once I've done that I'll pop a little blob of uh, glue and glaze over the top of it just to, to give it a bit of added security. And um, What I like to do is to start with the small ones first, so the, uh, the, the little tail lights uh, because they're the hardest to get in um, and once I've got those in place uh, then I'll put in the, the slightly bigger um, sort of lighting boxes for the, the direction or the, the headlights and the, the domino, former domino head code lights. Um, once I'm putting them in or when I'm putting them in, I also want to think about where I want the wiring to go so that I can route all of the wires in the right direction, the same direction. So in this case I want the, the wires to be um, to be pointing up the way and then to come along one side and along to the middle where I'm going to have everything terminated. Okay, so I'm going to go and get all these stuck in off camera and I'll be back once that's done. Great, so that's uh, that's the lighting glued in now. We've got the, the rear lights, we've got the, the headlight and the former domino head code lamps in as well. Um, they're all glued in from the back. It can take a little bit of shimming around just to get them sitting uh, just right, but really they're, they're looking, looking pretty good. Um, Really pleased actually with the way the rear lights have come out and I think widening them to allow for one mil uh, fibre optic was exactly the right thing to do. So anyway, um, I'm going to leave it uh, there for just now and uh, I'll come back in just a wee bit um, to look at wiring all of this up to the decoder. 
Okay, so now that we have got the LEDs installed into the body, everything is in place, the glue is dried, the paint is there, so we're all good to go in terms of the installation front. It's time to move on to the actual wiring up of the LEDs and the circuit work. Now, what I'll be doing is I'll be pulling all the wires in the same direction to a central point for one end and the same at a second end. And at that central point, I'll have a small circuit board which will have the various resistors uh, soldered onto it. The wires will come into that on one side and go out to the decoder on the other side. Um, I'm also going to install um, a, a little plug and socket um, arrangement so that we can remove the body completely from the locomotive chassis and the decoder without having to get the soldering iron out. Um, but That'll be a wee bit further on the video. What I'm going to do first anyway is uh, look at the, the resistors, the types of resistor that I'm going to use or the value of resistor that I'm going to use for each particular light uh, and the, the wiring of all of that up. So just before we dive into the, the actual soldering, the resistor part of the video, just to revisit the schematic that I showed earlier. So we have the, the lights in place. We have the wiring coming back from them and then the stage that we're looking at now is the resistor stage. Now, you need a resistor to reduce the, the, the current that will flow into the, the LED. If you don't have one, the LEDs will blow almost immediately. You often find with the, the Chinese LED manufacturers that they'll send you a, a, hundred, a thousand ohm uh, a one, one kilo ohm resistor free with the LEDs. Uh, that might work, but I find it's a little bit bright. So that what I'm going to look at, I think, is probably a 10, um, a 10K resistor for the, the head code um, light, probably somewhere between, I don't know, a thousand, maybe 2000, so 2K resistor for the headlight and the same for the reverse lights as well. So that's uh, that's what I think we'll probably plump for and I'll move on to the, the soldering the resistors onto the circuit board just now. Okay, so I thought I would show just um, very quickly um, how I go about soldering on these tiny little resistors. Um, so I thought I'll just show you with one there. They are very, very small, so it, it is quite hard to do. But firstly, I make sure that I've got a liberal amount of uh, of liquid flux on the PCB. Oh, it's not a printed circuit board, but on the circuit board, so that there's a good bit of flux there. Then I, I plonk on the the um, the resistor, and then I, I solder on one side first to get it in place. Then I solder on the other side, and then I go back and do the first one again just to make sure that it's good. So just... Apply some heat there, get the solder in, like that. take it away. So that's that held in place now. So we'll come round to the other side. Let's see if I can do this. There we are. We'll come round to the other side, get the heat in, get the solder flowing. Take that away, and then we'll just pop back to the other side just to make sure that that's a, a good joint as well. So we get the heat in, flow a little bit of extra solder on there. There we go, excellent. So it's not the absolute prettiest job in the world, but it certainly works, so we can get the, the meter out when we're finished just to make sure that all of the joints are absolutely fine and that we're good to go. So I'll finish off this board and I'll do the second board as well. And once I've got all of these ready to go, then we can move on to the next stage. Right, so that's the, the resistor soldered into the, the circuit board now. Um, in hindsight, I could probably have had this just as one circuit board um, because I've got enough length on the wires uh, to reach to a central point. But in some of the other locomotives, uh, and depending on how much wire has come on the LEDs, I've, I've sometimes needed two. But anyway, we'll work with two. So what I need to do is to link together the common, which is the, the two inside solder tabs here, or, or copper tabs. Um, so they will be linked together and will come down to the common blue. And then what I need to do after that is to link together all of the rear lights, which will come off the yellow, and link together all of the front, front or forward facing lights, which will come off the, the white. So I'm going to solder on a series of jumpers. 
onto this little socket, which I prepared already. Um, I'm not going to cover exactly how I prepared the socket in this video because it would just make it even longer than it already will be. Um, but I just used some very small um, connectors like this, a bit of heat shrink, a bit of solder, a bit of wire, and away you go. So we're going to solder the white, which is the front running lights, headlights, that kind of thing, and the yellow, which is the rear lights, the red lights the blue for the common. So I'm just going to get some very small gauge wire uh, to act as the jumpers and I'll leave enough space so they've got a wee bit of room to play with if I need it. But that's the next step anyway, wiring these up. Right, so that's all the soldering of the jumpers and the, the socket uh, all completed now. Um, if I was to do this again, I would make this all one single board and I would line up the different lights next to each other so we didn't need to have these jumpers going across. Um, the reason, as I say, that it's ended up like this is because I thought I'd have to have them as two separate ones at either, side, at either end of the body. But anyway, you live and learn. Next time I, I know to, to refine it <laughs> if there is a next time for the Lima 47. Anyway, so what we'll now move on to is wiring up the individual LEDs uh, to the actual tabs here. We'll get this installed into the the roof of the body uh, and then we can get the socket uh, fixed onto the DCC decoder and that's pretty much us there. Right, so this is the kind of laborious part and the I suppose the tricky part as well but uh, the rewarding part I suppose as well because when we get to the end of it then all the lights should fingers crossed work. Um, I'm not going to show you uh, soldering every single wire onto, onto here because that will be insanely boring for you to watch but the way that I like to do it anyway is to line up the loco in front to separate all of the wires out so we've got the uh, you know, the headlight, we've got the uh, the domino head code uh, or head box code. It's getting late, <laughs> whatever. Uh, the domino, the domino head code former as was wires, um, and then the the uh, the rear lights as well. So I separate them out like that, and I just methodically go uh, along, working my way along, and pulling all the common positives to the common tabs, uh, and then the individual switch wires, I guess, uh, onto onto the other tabs with the the resistors. Once I've done one side, I'll move on to the other side as well, exactly the same again. And uh, once I've done that, then we will get to the stage of almost being ready to test it all. So fingers crossed it all goes fine and I'll see you on the other side. So I'm halfway through soldering the, uh, the, the LEDs onto the resistor board. And one thing that I just thought I would mention quickly is that uh, I wired this bit here wrong. <laughs> so I have to rewire it. Um, what you need to do is uh, the white is forward and the yellow is reverse, but only at one end. And at the other end, uh, white is reverse and yellow is forward, excuse me, um, just so you get that directional lighting, of course. So what, what I need to do is I need to wire these up again, identical to this, but I will switch the jumpers over so that on one side, the yellow is feeding what is white on the other and vice versa. So I'll, uh, I'll grab the, uh, the schematic anyway and we'll run back over that quickly before we finish up. But just a wee reminder again that uh, the board for one end needs to be wired in reverse effectively to the decoder. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the wiring of all the LEDs complete now. Um, as the eagle-eyed amongst you may spot as well, I've switched around the feeders here so that uh, when one side is uh, is going forward, the other side is going back and vice versa. So that's us done anyway. It's not the absolute prettiest soldering job in the world, but some of this really fine soldering is, is pretty hard to, to get really neat. But it works, it's functional. I've tested it with my meter and everything is good to go. So the last thing that I have to do on the wiring front is to create a partner for this socket here. So we'll get a plug fixed up onto the DCC chip as the, the last step, and then we'll be able to give the lights a shot. So it's been uh, it's been quite a while since we looked at the chassis. Uh, <laughs> I almost forgot what it looked like, but anyway, we have the uh, we've got the decoder here and the uh, the auxiliary, the lighting wires are, are wrapped up in the capped on tape um, how I left it before. So I'm just going to to release these. And while I do this, I just wanted to to mention that. Um, the way that I've approached the lighting is more complicated than what you would you perhaps need to do if you just wanted some very basic lighting. You weren't too bothered about whether it was a prototypical size and so on. Um, there are simpler ways to do it. You could just use 
uh, small uh, LEDs. I think you can get ones at about 1.5 mil. They might do if you're happy to do that. It would be much simpler just to drill holes into the body and put them in. They wouldn't necessarily look prototypical, but they would work. Uh, another way that you could perhaps do it is to buy an express lighting kit or, or a similar pre-made lighting kit. When they arrive in the package, they look a lot like what I've made here, but they are pre-made and it cuts out an awful lot of the wiring and sort of self-assembly, although you still have to stick it into the into the body and you still have to make holes. But that's a simpler way to do it if you're not happy with wiring up some of those tiny wee electronics. But uh, anyway, back to, back to where we're at. Um, I'm just going to release these wires anyway and then we'll look at what we've got here and uh, we'll compare it to the wiring diagram that I've mentioned earlier. Great, so I've released the wires again. <laughs> Hopefully you can make them out, maybe against the white background here. Um, so we have the blue, which is the positive common. So that goes to the positive side of all of the LEDs. Um, if you're using a little grain of wheat bulb, um, it doesn't matter which side because they're not polarity dependent. We have the green, which is auxiliary one. Now that would be used for, say, a cab light if you're installing a cab light, or if you wanted to have the marker or head code lights on a separate circuit, you could use that. Um, for this particular installation, I'm not going to use the green one, so I'm going to, uh, to insulate that and keep that to one side. We've got the yellow, which is the reverse lights. So in the normal forward direction, that will be powering the red lights. Um, but it will also be powering the front facing lights in the reverse direction. And then we've got the white, which is ordinarily the, the front lights, the headlight or the head code lights, the side lights, the running lights, whatever you want to call them. That would normally be powering those in a forward direction, but in a reverse direction, it would be powering the rear lights of that cab. So we'll run over these as I'm wiring them again, just to look at them. But just to compare them to the actual diagram that I, I prepared, um, again, we have here, we have the, the yellow coming to the, the red for the rear light, um, but would also be the, the front light and the other way around. We've got the, the white going to the headlight uh, in cab one, which would be uh, the, the reverse light in cab two. And then again, we've got the green, which would be a marker or cab lights or whatever you want to use, but we're not using this one. So the main thing is to remember, if you're thinking about cab one, then it is yellow to the rear light, white to the front light. If you're thinking about cab two, then it is yellow to the headlight, front lights, white lights, and it is white to the rear lights. So it's the opposite way around for cab two. Otherwise, what you'll find is the headlights are on in either direction uh, when you're going in one direction, um, which isn't what you want. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is to isolate and insulate the green auxiliary wire because we, we don't want that flopping about inside creating a short. Now some people remove this from the decoder altogether, some people cut it really short. I generally, if there's enough room, I like to leave it as it is just so that, you know, if I come back in future and do add a cab light or something like that, then it's there in place and it's easy to use. What I like to do is I like to get a bit of heat shrink, um, but the heat shrink that I use for, for just insulating like this is heat shrink that has glue inside it. So when you heat it up, the glue sticks to the cable and it won't come off. Um, you can use normal heat shrink if you want to do that. Um, it's just sometimes there's a danger that over time it may come off. So I'm going to take this away and just quickly insulate the uh, the cable before we move on to the, the other three of them. Um, and what I use is a hot air gun, um, but you could use a, a cigarette lighter or even a flame over a stove or something like that if you're very careful. But heat shrink can, well, it doesn't go on fire, but it can hold a flame for a bit of time, uh, which isn't what you want. So if you've got one around a hot air gun is the way to go. Okay, so I have insulated and isolated um, the, uh, the green auxiliary. I put a little bit of heat shrink on it um, and I've wrapped it up with captain tape just to, to keep it out of the way. So that leaves us now with just these three wires left to deal with. We've got the common positive and we've got the negatives in the, uh, the form of the white and the yellow. Now, we have wired up, or I wired up earlier, a socket to go on the, the body side of the assembly, but this time we want to use a plug. Now, the way that I approach this is just to avoid the potential for any shorts and ruining a decoder. 
if it's a three pin plug like this, a socket plug, yeah, plug, three pin plug like this, I always put the common in the middle. Now what that means is that even if you put the plug in the wrong way around, all that's gonna happen is the lighting will be reversed. If you put the um, the positive common on an end one, then if you put the, uh, the plug in the wrong way around, then you're gonna be feeding with the wrong polarity to whatever it is that you, you've got installed. In some cases that might not matter in terms, it just won't work. In other cases, it could ruin whatever it is you're plugging into. So that's just a little trip tip that I, I like to use is that when I've got a three pin plug like this, uh, I always put the common in the middle. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the the plug just set sat down there at the right level and held in place with some blue tack. Um, I have got my soldering iron, which I'm just giving a quick clean now. Should have prepared this before. Quick clean, quick bit of uh, solder there, and I think I'm just going to hold this in place as I dab a little bit of solder on in the right place and get it fixed. Okay, there's one done. So I'll just repeat that two more times and then we'll move to the heat shrink. So that's the three of these soldered in place now. We've got the, the common blue in the middle and then the white and yellow either side. I've slid down the heat shrink, so I'm gonna take this over to the hot air gun now just to shrink down those and then shrink that over the top. And then that's us almost done. Okay, so that is us uh, all wired up, all heat shrunk. Uh, and all good to go. So I brought the body back in with the, the plug and the socket. Um, so what I'm gonna do is to line these up the right way around. So yellow to yellow, blue to blue, white to white, like so. Um, and then I get just a, a white paint pen. You could use a silver pen, anything that's unlikely to come off uh, and is easy to see. Um, and I just put a dot on the side that it needs to, it needs to go in. So there we go. Excellent. So it's not the end of the world if you get these the wrong way around because the way that I've wired it up, it'll not short anything out, it's just the cabs will be reversed. Uh, but the white dots will help to keep you on track. So the next thing is to get some power into the circuit and just to double check that everything is as it should be. Great, thumbs up. I've taken it to test track and uh, everything's working as it should. The directional lighting works fine. Nothing that I've done already has stopped working, which is always a good thing as well. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna disconnect the, the chassis and, uh, and the body. I'll pop the chassis just to, to one side for now. Um, and what I'll do is look at getting all of this installed into the, the roof the inside of the roof anyway on the body so it's all out of the way. What I normally do for this is just to use a little bit of black tack to hold the, the boards in the right place and then little black bits of black tack strategically placed so that the wires are out of the way of any of the workings and they sit neatly inside there. So I'm going to go away and do that uh, and then come back and that will be us just about finished. Right, so one thing that I'm just gonna do now is to remove the inner section of plastic in the top here. That's gonna create room both to get the, the lighting, wiring, and the, the PCB in place, um, but also uh, for a future video when I look at installing a better speaker, it's gonna create a little bit more room too. Now, this central section here has a couple of tabs here which push down onto the weight that's on the, the chassis to hold the weight in place. Now, the, the weight in the model that I've got is has been glued in by a previous owner, so uh, I can cut this out uh, and it won't be a problem. Uh, if yours hasn't been glued in, then do remember to glue the weight in, otherwise, if the loco is in transit or you pick it up quickly or something like that, the weight may flop about inside and create some damage. Great, so I have all of the wires now tidied away and um, I have made sure to keep them out of the way of the mechanism on this side. Um, to do that, I marked a little, we can't see it now because it's under the black tack, but I marked a, a little spot with a uh, red pen just so I knew what to keep clear. Uh, and uh, similarly on this side as well, I've kind of kept everything clear of where I think I might put the speakers in part three. Um, and uh, no, just generally kept everything as tidy as I possibly can do, uh, but leaving the connector here lying free. So because I've cut away the plastic and because I've um, glued down the, the steel weight, uh, these uh, these connectors along the top, you're not the connector, so the resistors, the string of resistors along the top, should be clear of anything metallic. But just to be on the safe side, if I bring, bring in the... Um, 
the chassis here. What I'm going to do is just put a, a thin layer of um, of my favourite tape, capped on tape, over the top of here just to double, no, doubly sure that uh, we're not going to get any shorting out. What I'll also do is to uh, to use a little bit of sticky back foam here just to affix the, uh, the DCC decoder onto the back of the block. It's already wrapped and capped on tape so there won't be any shorting out potential there either. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and then we'll be able to assemble everything and give it a quick shot on the test track just to, to demonstrate that everything is indeed working as it should. Right, so we've installed the lights uh, into the into the body of the locomotive. Now, the last thing that we really have to do before we can put the lid back on again is to perform a wee bit of surgery on the chassis itself. Now, you'll see on this particular lima that there's a cutout here. Um, this is for the, the headlight and the, the domino, former domino head code. Uh, lights there. Now, because we have now added in some direct, some rear lights, some additional directional lighting for rear lights, these two wee bits of plastic here on either side are going to get in the way. And when we put the lid back on, it will probably break the the LEDs that we so carefully uh, glued onto the back of the, the car, the, the fiber optic. So what we need to do is just with a little modeling saw, I just use this this little one, little sort of razor tooth saw, is just to, to get in there and cut these so that they're flush with the side here, flush with the side there. And I tend to do it on a very slight angle down because the, the LEDs that we'll be sticking in are just very slightly lower down than this one here. So cut it angle down a little bit and then the same on that side, same on the other side and then we can put it all back together again. Fantastic, so everything is fitted back in uh, just nicely. Um, I've got everything wired up, the, the plug and socket together. So I'm gonna take this now over to the test track and, and just to double check everything is working fine. Okay, so rather than Mohammed going to the mountain, I brought the mountain to Mohammed, or rather I brought the multi-mouse to the class, uh, class 47. Okay, so we're just, uh, I'm not going to go through all the sounds and all the other malarkey, but I just want to double check that the lights are working. So we've got it set up, it's on uh, number three, so let's see, put the lights on. And there we go, so we have the, the lights working fine, we've got the headlight and we've got the head code box lights into reverse. And we've got the red lights as well coming through. Now, actually, looking at this, despite having done a couple of uh, a couple of coats of black paint, there's still a little bit of light bleed around the side of the red lights. I also think they're they're quite um, bright for what they are. So, what I think I'll probably do on this is um, I had a 2.5k resistor that I put on for those lights. So I think what I'll probably do is switch that out for something a little uh, a little larger. So maybe like a 4.5k resistor. But other than that, it's all looking pretty good, and I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, well that's just reached the end of part two. Um, Thank you for sticking with me, assuming you have done to the end. I know it's been uh, it's been quite a long um, a long video this one because actually there's there's so many little steps and stages uh, in a in a conversion like this. But I think that despite the time and the finicky nature, some of it, I think it's really worth it. And hopefully you'll agree that the end result um, is definitely an improvement on on what we had before, which in this case was no lighting at all. Um, there are, as I say, other ways you can do this. You could use bigger LEDs, more conventional ones that might not look as good, but they're much easier to put in. You could use a, an express light, express lighting or express models lighting kit. I've forgotten exactly the name, but um, it, you could use a pre-made solution for lighting as well, and that would work. That would work well too and save some of the steps. But there's no getting away from the fact that if you want to convert one of these older style locomotives into DCC with lights and bells and whistles in it is going to take a, a wee bit of time and effort to do that. But anyway, thank you again for, for watching part two. In part three, I'm going to look at changing over the stock speaker that came with the TTS chip for something a little bit better. Uh, one of the benefits of using these old Lima Ringfield type locos is that there tends to be a lot of room to get a good speaker in. So hopefully I'll be able to try something a little bit different to what I would normally put into a Class 47 from Bachmann or Helgen. But anyway, that'll be part three. Hopefully you'll join me for that. Uh, but for the time being, if you've got any questions or queries, uh, pre please leave them below in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. Um, if you'd like 
to, um, to share the channel, to get other people involved in what we're doing here. That would be absolutely excellent. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't enjoyed it, feel free to give it a thumbs down too uh, and maybe let me know what I can improve on for next time. But anyway, I'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much for watching. Cheerio. Bye-bye.